Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be building a Flutter authentication system that's powered by Superbase. For those who are not familiar with Superbase, I will link to a video I made a couple of months ago explaining what uh, Firebase is and introducing Superbase in that video. But Superbase is basically a backend as a service that provides most of the important functionality that you would be used to from services like Firebase. So to get started with our example application, in this part of the, of the series, we will be looking at signing in through email and password and signing in with phone. In part 2 of the video, which will be released later on, we will be looking at social sign-up and passwordless sign-up as well as for good password flow. To get started with, with Superbase, you have to create a project. You will go to superbase.com, click on start your project. This should redirect you to app.superbase.io which you can create your organization and your project. After which you will head over to authentication tab over here. You will go to settings. You'll add site URL, which is your base URL for your website. And then you can also add um, redirect URLs. I've added one, which I wanted to redirect to home after successful authentication, but you can have multiple of them in a list. You just need to separate them in a comma. In this example, we'll be enabling email auth and phone auth. So just scroll down in the same settings under auth page. Enable email sign up, and we will not be using email confirmations for this example. Enable phone auth sign up. For email, that's all. For phone auth, I use this nice guide from this Swabiz website that I will link below that explains how to get your, your key and all that you need from Twilio. It is a pretty straightforward process. You just need to create a, a trial account, create a, a project name or an account name, get a number to use a test a phone number, say that you're using Twilio for SMS, for identity verification, and you want to use it with code, and you want to use your own hosting platform. And then when you, it will redirect you to their console page, where you will get your test number and you can find the account SID, the auth token and all the other information you need from their from their product information page and their, their console which looks somewhat like this. It might look a bit different but you, you should be able to find this information pretty easily. Then you'll go back to your auth settings under phone auth. You will enable phone auth and you will provide the, um, the SMS providers Twilio and the Twilio account SID and the auth token and the message service ID refers to the test number that they gave you. You will need to authenticate your phone with Twilio so that you can send you test codes on your phone while you're using the test account. And that is literally all for the backend for this example. For your Flutter application, you need to go to pub.dev, get the superbiz underscore Flutter package, and I'm using flutter underscore dot env package for managing the keys. Once you add these two dependencies to your app, Flutter will get them for you. Then you will come to main.dart. In your main function, just above the run app, you will ins instantiate superbiz to initialize, you will need a URL and an unknown key. Auth buckle back URL is an optional parameter you may or may not provide it. With the service URL and unknown key, you can find them in your service project. You just scroll down past the authentication tab into the settings tab and then API. Then you will see a card written project API keys, which is a public unknown key and a service troll secret key. You will take the unknown public key and for the url just below that you how you find the config place you will get the url just copy it copy those two values populate it in your dot env file in my case i created a folder called assets in the root and dot env there and i placed the information i needed inside there i'm accessing it just it's very direct as explained on the pub.dev page for flutter underscore env package so just import the package and then call await.nv.load file name, the name of the file that you've stored your variables in. And then just use the bracket notation, the name that's referencing the value you've saved in your env file. Don't forget to git ignore your env file so you don't commit them to version control. So then you have your superbiz instance set up and your backend ready to go and you're ready to start making your application. So the first part of this auth flow that we will look at is a sign in sign up flow. In the libs folder I created three folders, a screens, a UI elements and a utils folder. I have a utils folder that's holding all the superbiz functionality in terms of the methods I need to use for this case. Uh, so in that folder, I'm using the Superbase Flutter package. 
I'm just associating service with instance of client to a variable called super client. And then I have a bunch of methods that I'm using. So in this case, we will just be looking at the email and the phone auth ones. So for email password um, wrapping, I'm creating a, a function called create new user that takes in an email and a password calls uh, the client auth sign up email password and then it has a response which is a go true session response. So Superbase auth uses a go true server which is why the return type is go true session response. For that signing up a new user, for signing in it's the same thing but uh, now we are calling sign in instead of sign up and uh, we have to use this syntax as opposed to just directly passing the email and password. So those are the two methods we are going to be looking at in this case, signing in and signing up a user. My other folders here will go to the screens to the auth flow folder. We need um, the sign in page, which is my home page. So if you look at if you look at main.dat, I'm using named routes for the routing. So you can see I, uh, my initial route points to the sign in page. Then there's a sign up and all these other pages. So we got the sign in page, which is this page here with the sign in elements on it. So this page is just a scaffold and a body that returns a column with two children and auth form and other providers. In the auth form, we are passing in a, a property called title text, a custom property called title text. And in this case, the title text says sign in. So if we go to auth form, the auth form handles both sign in, sign up, reset password flows. This is the one that we will be looking at to understand what's going on. So this is, we have two text editing controllers. Other than the UI elements, which is just a container and, and you know, the width and some padding space around it. It's a form. The form key referring to the global state of the form. The form's child is a column and in this column we have the text at the top. Choose the title text that you're passing in and two form fields separated by a size boxed widget. And then you have a button that's wrapped in a size box to make it, to give it a width and give it some height. Uh, first text box, the first text form field just, I'm using the email validator package to validate email addresses. So just make sure that the value is not null or empty and that it's an actual email being passed. And then we are tying it to the controller we defined at the top, which is the email controller. The second text form fields is just to get a password. I'm not using any it's a simple password validator that simply shouldn't be empty and it shouldn't be less than six characters long. And the password controller we are passing with this. So when it comes to the button, the button is displaying sign in or sign up depending on what the title text says. And on the on press does quite a few things because it's the same widget we are using for the entire email sign up process. In the case that it's sign in and the form is valid, we are signing in the existing user and passing in email text and password text. If there is no error, if there is no error, we show a dialog with, a, with an alert that just displays the error to the user and then clears the form and then keeps them on, on the sign up page. Else if there is no error, then we send them in successfully and we move them to the home page. In the case that this that the text isn't signed in so it's a sign up get a new user and it's basically the same process that we are repeating here. the bottom here is the is referring to this part of the application the forgot password don't have an account logic so we will not go through that right now that's all for email and password so if you go to superbase helper again this is where everything is happening create new password just calls the service client at auth sign up method that returns a go to session same as existing sign in an existing user we will now check our application our third application and we click on sign up which will just switch the names basically in the routes it's the same exact thing um as a sign in page this is a sign in page and this is a sign up page it's the same thing we are just passing in a different text to the form let's create a user It tells us that um, registration is successful and then it sends us up and then if we sign out it takes us back. Uh, something to quickly note is that the home page is the protected route of this application so you will only be you will only be shown the text we saw 
and the option to sign out. If there's an active session, the active session is now, then you're sent back to the sign in page. So now, if we try to sign in with our user, we are allowed to sign in. And you can see that we have information on this user being given back to us, so we actually have an active session. So if we sign in and we give the wrong credentials, we get this error in valid login credentials. So we cannot sign in. We also cannot sign up an existing user. So my user already exists. User already registered, so we can sign up an existing user. If you come back to our Superbase project and reload it, and go to authentication and then users, you'll see that our user was created. Next thing we're going to uh, look at is now the phone authentication. On the providers page, um, we have a few methods going on here, but we'll be focusing on the the phone auth. So when you click the button that says sign up with phone auth, all that happens is that you push to the phone auth page or screen, and the phone auth is given this context text, as I, as I then creatively called it the which lets the phone not know whether or not we are signing up or we're signing in this context tax is the same thing that's being passed here in the parent page because other providers is being it's a widget being called under the sign up and the sign in pages so we pass it we pass context text to the other providers in the other providers page and we pass that down to the phone auth screen in this button here and the phone auth is also a form state and over here we are preparing to accept the arguments are being passed so we just create a simple form we only have two text controllers phone and password over here we are extracting the arguments from the model route and now we have access to the ctx text which is this variable we made here so it's a it's a form other than the ui elements which is just a container with width and some spacing around it it's a form that's whose child is a column which has a uh, text fields and two text form fields with a size box in between for spacing and then a button at the bottom uh, so we're using the context text to determine whether it's a sign up or a sign in, to determine both the text that will be shown as a title and to determine what methods you're calling depending on whether we are signing up a phone user or we're signing in a phone user. This is important because when you're signing up a phone user, there's a verification step they need to take. And if you're signing them in, then there is no verification step because we are choosing to sign them up or in using phone and password, not just phone alone. You could also choose to just have your user sign in with phone alone without a password. But in my opinion, having a user have to input a verification code. I, I, in my opinion, that's bad UX basically. So that's why I chose to have the phone email verification instead. So that the user only verifies their phone number once. And after that, they can sign in with their phone and password. The text form fields work the same way as the other one. You just check for length. I do not have any particular form phone number verification like in this example application the assumption is that if the user wants to sign in they would put an actual phone number else they will not get the verification so they will not be signed in and that is the only form of actual validation i'm doing here so yeah so on the on the button the action button for for the phone auth flow which refers to when you click sign up, sign up with phone. This is the phone auth page you're talking about. So it requires a phone number and a password. And then when you come to the button, we look at the on press functionality for this, uh, for the phone auth. The form is valid and it's a sign up. It's a new user who's signing up. We are going to create new phone user, pass them the phone text and the password. And if, if there's no error, we are going to push them to the verifications page. 
we are passing the arguments which is the phone and the verification code so when you go to verifications you're preparing to accept this uh, data we have a form state we only have one field which is called token we are extracting data from the tokens we need the header text hint because this uh, verifications page is being used for the reset password as well so if it's there if the header text is there then whatever the data text is else we are on the reset logic so in this case we are looking at phone auth so this is just a form it's the same thing a form with one text and one button so it's checking if uh, the form is valid and if our header text is not reset password then we are calling verify phone user and you're passing it the the phone from the arguments that we we just passed through the routes and the token dot text so the response to the message is not null we push the user to home route else the error that they have and we clear the form text for the super base part of this create new user calls swabase client dot auth dot uh, sign up with phone passing in the phone and password verify phone user is uh, service client dot auth to verify otp where we're passing the phone number and the token and you're telling it where we want it to redirect to after it's done verifying both this verify phone number is a method that takes in phone and token for signing in user with phone we're just calling super client dot auth to sign in and you're passing in the phone and the password um, in our application you come back to sign up for phone user you will put in the phone number that you verified with twilio because it's a test account you click sign up it asks you for the verification you should get an sms from twilio with with your verification this verification expires in a minute in 60 seconds after you research your password successfully you should be logged in now that you cannot go to home if you're not logged in it will redirect you back to sign in so that's all for the example regarding email password and phone in the next video look at the remaining auth methods if you found this video valuable please like it it helps spread the video to other people who are also trying to learn flutter and i'll see you in the next one